Hello and welcome back, I'm Shrike here with another D&D video. Today we're going to be talking about how to use potions in your Dungeons & Dragons game. In this book here there are 20 potions, some of which have variations as well, but I still think that potions are underused quite a lot in Dungeons & Dragons games out there. So in this video we're going to talk about how to use these potions in your Dungeons & Dragons games, hopefully to make them better. But before we do that, I upload D&D videos here on YouTube every Monday and Thursday, so please hit the subscribe button if you are into Dungeons & Dragons, and make sure to hit the notification bell just next to it so that you get notified when I upload a video. So as I said, I do believe that potions are underused in a lot of Dungeons and Dragons games out there and I think there are three reasons for that. The first of which is because the potions take an action to drink, the second of which is depending if your party is the type of party that will prepare for an encounter or not, and then the third of which is how many potions are actually being given out by the dungeon master. So let's start with the first one, that it takes an action to drink a potion. This means that you have to use that action to drink that potion rather than doing a spell or doing an ability that your class has. And a lot of the time it won't be worth using the potion, it would be much more cost efficient to use the action on something like a spell. For example, if you are a 5th level fighter so you have 2 attacks, you can use your action to do 2 attacks, or you could use your action to drink a potion of healing which only does 2d4 plus 2 healing. So in that situation you would probably just attack twice and then wait for your cleric to use their action to do better healing. So if you think this is a problem in your game, then there are two ways that you can solve it. So the first way that I've managed to solve this in my game is by having two different sizes of potion. One of which that takes three or four gulps, which therefore means that you have to use your action. And the second of which is a test tube style container, which is just a shot and therefore you can use a bonus action to drink. This does take a little bit of work on the Dungeon Master's side because they have to actually create the bonus action style potions. But most of the time I just basically cut the effect a little. So for example, a 2d4 plus 2 healing potion, if it's in the test tube, is actually only 1d4 plus 1. Therefore, if you do have a fighter who has 2 attacks and nothing to do with their bonus action, they can chug a potion instead. I know there are quite a lot of games out there that actually just do a blanket rule that all potions are bonus actions, but I think if there's a potion of gaseous form, for example, gaseous form as a spell takes an action, so putting a potion that then is a bonus action basically means there's no point in ever casting the spell, you might as well just get potions of it. So I found that these two sizes works pretty well. And a second way of solving the problem that potions are underused is actually the second point that I brought up and that's about preparing for an encounter. If the encounter is going to be against a beast or a monster or something like that, you can start to describe the smells in the air of death, or the claw marks that are on the wall, or the big paw prints on the floor, and then that should give your party enough time to think, oh, we're about to be in an encounter, quick, let's chug this potion of firebreed. But if it's a social encounter that you're throwing upon them and they didn't know was coming, you could do other stuff like saying you hear the footsteps of someone coming down a stop spiral staircase, or you hear the locks unlocking on a door, and then that prompts your party to know they've got enough time to do a quick thing and they might take a charm person potion, for example. And the other way is just to talk to them outside of game and say, look, when I'm doing these description things, that means that you have time to interrupt me and do your own thing. And they might not have known that they could interrupt you, so just by saying that outside of game might solve that issue as well. Now obviously this isn't going to work if you're the DM and you're throwing a surprise at them, because maybe you just don't want them to be able to prepare. And then the last point that I brought up was how many are given out in your game. If there's only a few given out in your game, you'll find that your players will hoard them, hoping that one day they'll be of use, but then the players end up getting a higher level than the potions are, so there's no reason to ever really use the potions because they've got better spells, better abilities to use instead of the potions. So if you think that sounds like your game, the easiest thing to do is just give out more potions. I don't think unless you're giving out absolutely tons of potions and they're all much higher level than your characters are, it will actually break the game. You'll be absolutely fine. Especially with healing potions because they're not the type of potion that their character can drink before the combat happens. They have to drink it during, so they have to weigh up if it's worth using the action or bonus action. So there are the reasons why I think potions are quite underused in Dungeons & Dragons games, but let's talk about how to use potions in your world. 
The first thing you'll have to decide is how they're created and then that will lead on to how common they are. If you decide that it's actually a pretty tough task to make potions, then obviously there's going to be less in your game and alchemists are going to be much harder to come by. But if you decide that potions are something that actually taught the basics of in wizard school, then maybe there's a lot more out there and therefore a lot more potions. And if you are going that route of having potions quite common, maybe there are farms out there which are farming the components that are needed to make the potions for your alchemists. And then on the other hand, if they are harder to get, then the price point is probably going to be a lot higher, but maybe their effects are much greater. What has worked quite well in my game is by giving common and uncommon potions out quite a lot, but then rare, very rare and legendary potions, the party have to go on a little side quest to get the components to make the potion. Or they could just pay someone else to go and get them for them. That way in the earlier levels when they're getting quite a lot of common and uncommon potions they start to sort of depend on them in a way and then later on when they want to get the harder bits they are actually more inclined to go on the mini adventure to go and get the components. There are also quite a lot of third party products out there if you want to add mechanics to potion making. For example if a character wants to become an alchemist on the side so go and check them out some of them are really good. I don't use them in my game but I've read quite a few of them. Usually I'll say that if someone for example wants a really big powerful potion of fire breathing that they need to bring a heart of a young red dragon. And then I set up a little mini adventure for them to go and get this young red dragon's heart. Any potion that you introduce into the game or your players say they want you can probably associate with a monster or a plant so you can just create an adventure for them to go and kill a monster and bring back a body part or to go to a dangerous place to get this plant. So let's round off this video by talking about how to create a new potion that's not in the dungeon master guide or in any other book. The easiest way to make a brand new potion is just to get an effect from a spell and then put it in a potion form. You could also alter the spell however you want, so if you wanted to make the duration longer you could do that, or if you wanted to make the damage less you could do that. And then similarly you could do this with a class ability, such as the monk's ability to run up walls, you could make a potion so that if you drink it you're able to run up vertical surfaces. I've also introduced potions into my game where if you drink them you get the benefits of a short or a long rest, or you get to spend the hit dice. I think they're all mechanics which aren't utilised enough in Dungeons and & Dragons. And then the other way is just to google it, there was tons of people making tons of potions out there with cool ideas, so just go and find them, go and check reddit, there's loads on there, and just use them. So there you have it, hopefully that's helped you use potions in your world. If you have found this useful, please do give this video a like, and if you want to see more Dungeons & Dragons content every Monday and Thursday, make sure to hit the subscribe button and then ding the notification bell next to it. But until next time, Happy gaming.